What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to start working with MongoDB. So we're going to make a few changes to our API in Deno in order to use this document oriented database. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. This is the library that we're going to use in order to connect our Deno application with MongoDB. And this is the URL, deno.land slash x slash Mongo. So Deno Mongo is a database driver based on Rust's official MongoDB library. And we're going to see that when we run the application using this library, it's going to download the plugin into our workspace. And here it says that because the plugin API of Deno is still unstable, we need to use this unstable flag. Actually, these are all the flags that we need to include if we want to run an application that includes this library. Allow net, allow write, allow read, allow plugin, and unstable. Okay, and now let's jump into Visual Studio Code. So this is the application that we've been working on where we are using Dactyl as the web framework. So we created this band controller using Dactyl's decorators. And here we define the different endpoints. The first endpoint to get the list of existing bands. Then we create another endpoint to get bands by ID. And also we added this post endpoint to create new bands. And here we are interacting with this band repository where we are using the DSO or REM library for Deno and MySQL as the database. And we added the, all these methods, find all, find by ID and insert. So what we are going to do here is we're going to extract an interface. We're going to make this the MySQL implementation of that interface. And then we're going to create a new implementation for MongoDB. Okay, first let's rename this repository. So let's call it MySQL repository. And now let's create a new file here where we're going to define our interface. So this will be band repository. So this is interface band repository and here I'm going to extract the methods so we're going to have the find all method then we're going to have the find by ID method And finally, we're going to have the insert method. Here I need to import band. So this is import band from, and this is dot dot ips dot ts. And this is going to return void. And here we need to export this interface. So this is export and this is band repository. Okay, now we are going to grab this from here and we're going to make this class implement that interface. So this will be implements and we paste the interface here. We need to import it. So this will be import And repository from and this is and repository dot ts and here I forgot to rename the class this is my SQL repository so now let's go to the controller here and here we need to change this and we need to set new my SQL repository and we're going to need to import that. Okay. And here we import that class. Okay, so now that we have our band repository and we have the specific implementation for MySQL, let's work on a MongoDB repository implementation. So we are going to use MongoDB Atlas. Let's go there. So basically, MongoDB Atlas is a cloud-based service for MongoDB. 
And here you can create a cluster, you can select the cloud provider. In my case, I selected AWS. And here, if you click on connect, you can see different options to connect with the database. In our case, we're going to connect an application. Here we can select node for now. There is no demo option yet. So here we can grab this URL. And here we need to replace, of course, the password with the right password. And we're going to create, in our case, uh, an environment variable. And we're going to assign this value there. And here we can see the collections. So I'm going to create a new database so we can store our band elements there. So here I'm going to call it Deno. And the collection name will be bands. And here we have our Deno database and our bands collection. Okay, now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And now let's create a new file. So this will be Mongo repository. And here we can start coding our class. So this will be export class Mongo repository. And this is going to implement our band repository interface. So this is band repository. And import that interface here. So this is import band repository from, and this is dot band repository dot ts. Okay, let's close this and this, and let's grab all this. So we have our method signatures. So this will be async find all. And here we have the body of the method. The same for the find by ID. And the same for the insert method. And here we need to import band. So this is import band from, and this is dot dot types dot ts. Okay, and we need to remove this from here. Okay, and now let's add a constructor. So it will be constructor. And here we need to create our MongoDB client. So first I'm going to need to access the environment variables. So I'm going to create a constant here. And here this will be deno.env dot to object. And this is const actually like that. Okay, now let's create the MongoDB client. So this will be const client. And here I need to import the MongoDB client. So let's go to the library and I'm going to grab this from here and I'm going to paste it here. So here, this will be new Mongo client. And here I need to associate the URI. So this is client.connect with URI. And here I'm going to pass the environment variable that I already created. That is end dot Mongo TV URI. Okay, and now we need to create the collection for our database. So I'm going to create a private property here that would be private bands. And here I'm going to use another special class from the library that is called collection collection and here I need to first I need to assign the name of the database and this is client dot database and the name of the database in our case is Deno. and now I need to assign the collection name so this is this dot bands and this equals to db dot collection 
and the name of the collection is bands okay and now i can start working on the methods so this will be return await and here i'm going to use this dot bands and here i access this collection so this will be dot find and this is going to return all the existing bands the next one will be return await and here i can use this dot bands dot find one like this and here i'm going to pass the object id so here i need to pass the object and here i pass underscore id and here i'm going to use this expression for mongo that will allow us to access the object id so this is dollar sign oid and here the value will be the id that i receive here as a parameter like this okay and finally the insert method will be await this dot bands dot insert one and here i pass the band that i receive as an argument Okay, and that's pretty much it for the repository. So I'm going to use this new repository from the controller. So I'm going to replace this MySQL repository by Mongo. So this will be Mongo repository. And I'm going to remove this import here for now. Okay, now let's try this out. So this will be deno run. And we need to add a few flags here. So the first one would be hello net. Then we need to add dash dash hello read. Then hello write. And we also need to add dash dash hello end to access the environment variables. And we also need to add the dash dash hello plugin flag. And finally, we need to add the unstable flag. And finally, we need to pass the config file. Config equals ts config dot json. And this ts config file basically includes the options to use these decorators that we're using here in the controller. And finally, we need to pass the name of the server file that is server.ts. So now it's going to compile the code and it's going to create a new folder here with the plugin. As we can see here, it's going to download the plugin, downloading the no plugin, the no underscore Mongo from, and this is the URL. And here, this is the file that downloaded that includes the plugin. Okay, so now our Dactyl application is up and running. So let's try all these endpoints. Let's go to Postman and let's run a request to get the list of existing bands. This will return an empty array. As we can see here, we get a 200 and an empty array. So now let's create a new band. So let's run this post request and we get the 201 and the data of the band that we just created. And if we go to the database here and we refresh this, we're going to see the new document here with the object ID. So I'm going to grab this object ID from here. Let's go back to Postman. And now let's run a get by ID. So I'm going to pass the object ID here. And if I run this, I should get the data of the band. Yeah, I get a 200 and the data of the band and the object ID. And if we go back to the endpoint where we get the list of existing bands, and if we run this, we're gonna see that we get an array with the band that we created. So that's all I have for today. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to the channel, and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.